Um, we're going to run through this pretty quickly. Um, I should have a little dinger. Um, dinger is here. Yay. That's it. Cool. Um, I'm going to go through this quickly. The, um, uh, the presentation is going to be on two different websites, wineindustryinsight.com right now. It's the, the top uh, link. And the other is on lewisperdue.com, which is a little easier to remember sometime, which is my novel writing site. And before I start, I really want to say that having followed trade shows for a long time, back into the 90s, I've watched so many people fall on their face trying to make a successful trade show for wine in New York City, and they've fallen and fallen and fallen, and Sid did it. I'm, my hat is off to Sid and the way he's done these things because he's, he's succeeded where so many people have failed, and, and that's just cool. Um, so let's see, does this, is this going to work? Is this going to work? Okay, good, that part works. Uh, I'm going to go real quickly through here. Um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to place advertising where it is because it is content, and it's a type of content that varies in purpose in, and in credibility, lower in credibility, purpose being to sell. But there is a spectrum here that you have to look at. And, and once again, uh, uh, we will run through this uh, quickly. So your credibility is basically based on the extent of sell, the implied third party verification, which you may have if you've got a celebrity endorsement or an expert endorsement um, in an ad. Um, um, go, go, go. There. Um, okay. Yes, I've been sitting. Side buttons. You know, I've only been in the tech business a long. There we go. A long time, and I can't work one of these. It's it's amazing. Um, uh, so let's go back here. Okay. Extent of sale, implied third-party credibility, relevant expert status. Um, when you get into advertising, and we're going to get into what makes a good ad, first of all, be specific about you, what you want. First, do no harm. There are a ton of advertising formats uh, that will introduce malware for, for people who either see the ad, click on the ad, um, uh, trigger ad blockers, which more than 30% of the people are now using and are highest on, on the rise uh, for millennials. Um, so you, you need to first do no harms. Third, know your customer. I can't tell you how many people advertise to a crowd. It's who is that person. Figure out what the face is of that person and then make an offer that matters to them. It doesn't matter about you. It doesn't matter that your product is new. It doesn't matter that your product is ISO 4,537,000, and that's cool, and it costs you a lot of money to get there. They don't care. What's in it for them? What's it going to do? Is it going to make more money? Is it going to make their life easier? Are they, something matters to them, but you have to know who you're dealing with. And who you're dealing with is going to be very different whether you're dealing with, with a retailer at a small end, retailer at, at the top end, and by the way, retailer at, at the mass end, uh, locations has to be one of my favorite wines. Dave Finney is a genius, and you can get it at Safeway. It'll pop up even everywhere, Safeway really, is, but that's just a, an aside. Um, so select your, select your media to fit, okay? You probably don't want to go into Google AdWords because Google AdWords is going to charge you a small amount per click, but it's going to cost you a lot if you're, if, you're try, if you're reaching a lot of people who aren't really your customer. You really want to see who your customer is, OK? So let's start back. I'm going to rush through these. Um, targeting, OK? You can't sell to a crowd, OK? Um, I'll probably get chased off the stage for using a, um, a hunting metaphor, but if you go dove hunting or you go duck hunting, you have to select a bird because if you shoot at the flock, you never eat that night. Shoot at 
someone not in the crowd, but put a face. So if you go back here, you got a crowd. There's no faces. There's that big mass of, of people that want to buy something. But select some in the crowd, and obviously this was relatively random because I have no idea who those people were in the crowd. But, but look, you want to, are you aiming toward an investor, the owner, the winemaker, the vineyard manager? Figure out which one of those that you want to sell to. The second thing that you have to look at is selling is not always so easy because there's somebody that you may be dealing with who has perhaps a first decision or narrowing the, the choices down, but they may not have the entire decision. That may be shared with the CEO, the investor, the CFO, uh, whoever it happens to be. So your sell is not necessarily that narrow casted person you want to sell to the winemaker, really cool. Well, the winemaker wants something that costs um, $900,000. You're going to have to talk to, you're going to have to sell to the CFO or you're going to have to sell to the owner. You're going to have to sell the production manager. So you can target that person, but then you need to have a feeling for who in that company is actually involved in the decision. So, in many cases, you say, okay, let's go with a trade publication. Okay, great. What does the trade publication cover? If you want to go for something technical and, and a winemaker, then you, you, you look at maybe something like Wines and Vines, um, uh, used to be Practical Winery and Vineyard, some of the ASEV publications. Okay, that's great. You've got your key person, and they may be the person you're selling to, but you're going to have to look at business publications as well, not just Business Week, because Business Week is probably not really that targeted for you. But you would want to look at Wine Business Monthly, or you would look at um, uh, my publication, Wine Industry Insight. Um, but you want to look at something that focuses on business. Then at that point, oops, let's go back here a sec. At that point. You put all the, the, the things together because you've got motivation, the ease, meaning it's an easy decision. You want to affect the behavior. So you're trying to affect the behavior of your main targeted person, and you want to make sure that you've covered your landscape for those who are going to need to be in on the decision. The same. This is basically the, the uh, infographic word um, for, the, for that last, chap, uh, uh, last slide, OK? Behavior modification requires motivation, simplicity, and you end up with triggers, OK? The facilitator, the spark, the signal. OK, uh, we're going to cover that. Uh, find out what your customers want. How do you find out what they want? I mean, First of all, you shouldn't ever try to sell to anybody that you don't have a friend in the, there, um, somebody that you've worked with. You need to know what makes them tick. You need to know what they care about. So f feedback from the salespeople, okay? Your salespeople are great, but you've got to enable that salesperson to, to listen, not just, oh, I want this. Well. What do you want it to do? OK, that's good. Now, now what is that going to do for, for, for you? And what is that going to do for the company? And you, you have to listen, because what people tell you they want is not always the thing that motivates them to buy your product or to use your service. So you've, got to, you've really got to pin that down. What's in it for them? So a whole bunch of places uh, to look. Uh, read the publications if, you're, if you t take a visit. What publications do they have? I mean, that's one of the interesting things about print is print has gravitas and a physical presence. I mean, I, when I, I sold Wine Business Monthly in, in the late 90s, and when I got back into the business, I decided I didn't want dead trees in the Postal Service as, as customers, but it has gravitas. What sits there? What's, what are they, they flipping through? 
What sites do they use? Look at social media. Where are they, where are they, they posting? Is it Twitter? Is it Facebook? What are they saying? So after listening, these are the kind of things that you have to sell them on what's better. Is it getting a promotion, more sales? Boy, I screwed that one up, didn't I? Um, I must have, it must have been important. I said it twice on the same slide. Um, uh, so act, collaborate, distill your notes. This is a company-wide thing. It isn't just one person in defining that. OK. Here's a really good ad. Now, Sid and I, I talked about this, and, and Sid said, oh, is this going to really make us look bad? And the answer is no, it's not, because these are good ads. OK? These are better ads than you see in most cases. But every ad can always use some tweaking in looking at things. So you've got a limited amount of space. At, oops. Now that's supposed to be my print. My, there we go. You've got a limited amount of space, so you don't need to see the same thing twice. Um, as we'll see in a minute, the use of a face attracts people in an ad or to a page first. This could have been a little bit larger. That's OK. Crop it. But we go through here and we go, OK, now learn about, well, why should I learn? I mean, maybe I already know why I should learn about. But if I don't, then you go, OK, what's it about? Oh, more money. These, so these are two different ads. These are both terrific uh, ads. But in terms of tweaking things, and I'm going to get into some, some, some specifics here very quickly, those are the kind of things that you can make uh, make big differences in the click-through. And we'll talk about in a minute something that's very important. Click-through is one thing. Conversion is another. And just because you have a great ad that makes people click on it doesn't mean that they're going to convert. They're going to follow through with something on the page. Now, I'm going to very quickly, OK, use these types of ads and people will hate you. OK, and I know animation, self, you know, uh, expanding ads, oversized image ads, interstitial ads, um, pop unders, pop overs, um, uh, they are, are not only, hello, they are not only annoying, but they get you this. See, that says ad right there. OK, that's what happens. Uh, Ad blockers, some, they're different ad blockers. They work differently. And some of them will just go, add. OK? So you're paying for that. You don't want to pay for that. So um, let's look at another area in here in terms of both the ad and the, the landing page. OK? And the landing page is the payoff. What's in it for me? And then you have to pay off. OK? Right? Well, well, we'll skip ahead to this one. 100 millisecond delay. That's a tenth of a second. You'll lose a, enormous amounts. A tenth of a second can make the difference between somebody who punts out of your, your um, um, uh, uh, conversion or not. Oops. Let's go quickly here. All right. Here's, here's another. In, in terms of, of conversion rate. If you, um, uh, if you look at 100 milliseconds, oh, that only cost you uh, about 7%. One second, you're into tw up 20%. Two seconds, and you're going to lose a third, roughly, of your conversions. OK? So speed is important. Auto running videos, other kind of things that slow the page down will, will get you killed. Um, the optimal load time, 1.8 seconds for desktop. Something, a large number of people will punt out of anything if they don't see something in 1.8 seconds. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a link to this um, off of the site. And if it doesn't load properly, email me. Um, but Amazon found that if they slowed the page by just 100 milliseconds, it resulted in a 1% decrease in sales. 
you multiply that by the earnings, one second can cost them a billion dollars. With Google, Google found out that one second would cost them 13, 13 billion for, for uh, half a second. Um, we're gonna pop in here, ad blockers are another reason why people use them is because of slow loading pages. You look at this and you find that most millennials are using those and if that's the audience that you wanna reach, you're not gonna reach them with anything that loads slowly. Um, and this will go really quickly. You can follow this through on, on the download, but it's called malvertising. And malvertising uh, is where an ad appears on a page, perhaps you don't even have to click on it, and it will load ransomware, other kinds of malware on your computer. It gets in there, well, nearly a million new th threats are released every day. Okay, this is one thing quickly. If you look at Google AdWords, this shows how does the malware get in there. And basically is bad guy buys an ad from Google. The, the entire process is automated. Bad guy lo loads malware into the ad in codes. Usually it can be JavaScript, it can be in Flash, it can be in a number of ways. And before Google or the other large ad servers can actually track it down, it's already been spread. So one of the things that you, well, other ad servers. The other thing is a lot of uh, browsers are now blocking ads from ad servers and you're not gonna get through if you're using one of those. I'll pop through here. Everybody says mobile is taking over. Mobile is taking over in terms of total bandwidth used. On the other hand, it turns out that there is a sweet spot in the, in, um, uh, in the desktop, and the sweet spot in the desktop is, is where people work. If you wanna reach people where they work, um, you need to get them on their desktop. More mobile, okay. Go where they want to hang out. not totally self-serving here. People read industry um, um, uh, uh, publications and websites. So it doesn't matter whether it's mine, uh, Don's, uh, um, anybody else's, that's where they're gonna be hanging out. You need to go there to find them. Okay, real quickly through here, I'm getting there. Um, uh, in terms of, of designing it, okay. You've focused in on who you're selling to, you've got their face, you know who you've got to influence once you've got them. Then, first of all, context matters, okay? Part of that means guaranteed position. You want to buy the real estate on the page, whether it's a web page or not. You, another reason not to buy uh, Google AdWords or some of the others because those placements can often be all over the map. Um, your ad may go next, you know, next to a, a condom ad, which is there's nothing wrong with condoms, but on the other hand, that doesn't help you selling in the wine business. Um, uh, make an offer that matters. Be visually eye-catching. If people don't see you, you might as well not have paid for it. We'll get some, some examples, I'm gonna rush through here. Okay, landing page, okay, in terms of context, where the F do you wanna be on the page? Okay, if you look at, uh, my laser's not working. Anyway, if you look at those three screen captures on the right, they vaguely resemble something where you've got an F, the I starts at the left side, it goes this far and then it goes back, and it doesn't go as far, and then it goes back. But you end up with essentially an F thing. The key is the F shape uh, in the middle image got really disrupted because there was a face. Um, uh, here's another one in terms, that, by the way, that previous uh, example is done by a company called Nielsen Norman, not, uh, not uh, connected with Nielsen, the data people. Nielsen Norman is the world's best acknowledged um, interface design company. Uh, they have some minor clients like Google and Microsoft and other people um, who use them to figure out how do you structure a page. Okay, now the interesting thing about this is that 
faces can interrupt the F part. Now, let's see if I can get, there we go. Um, you notice right here, in terms of eye tracking, that other was a heat map, this is eye tracking. The first place the eye went was on this face. And the thing that's really amazing is that face isn't even that prominent. But that's the first, come on, first place it landed. Eh, come on. Uh, I think, the, there we go. Um, and then it went down and read all of this. Now the key part is there's not a blue dot up here on the ad. Nobody looked at the ad. The eye didn't go there, but the eye did go to a face. Okay, and so, um, okay, payoff specific. Okay, here we go. All right, one more. And uh, trust me, Sid's done stuff so right, and I've just been picky and uh, trying to make it pay off better. Good. Um, uh, so when you, when you come up with a promise, you want to pay off immediately, right? So the ori original way this started, oh, visitor pass, cool, I'm going to get a pass. Um, wait, um, pass, where's, where's the pass? Um, the other thing about Eventbrite, and sometimes, I mean, Big Fortune 500 companies use it, small companies use it. It offers a terrific service. One of the things that you have to be careful of with it is that all of this stuff is theirs. You also, you can get distracted. You, you, the one about browse um, events and stuff. People might click on this and totally lose the page. But here we go. Um, we don't see pass here. So the, so the key word is pass. And we go to the next page. And, okay, cool, here's a pass. Now remember, the unusually motivated might spend more than a second and a half, okay? You're competing for narrow attention spans. But, no, come on. But here, wait, we have, uh, come on, there we go. We have, oh, uh, it's dying, enter promotion code. Um, well, you don't need a promotion code. Um, but if you do, but you, you get, oh, wait, Wait a minute, okay, so you pun out. Okay, here's a way that we worked with this, and I don't do this with every advertiser. I mean, I, I, I'm totally invested in what Sid's trying to do because he's been doing terrific stuff. So I don't spend a lot of time, but okay. This is free pass. Okay, there's an entire um, uh, uh, pr a printout of a template of the newsletter, not all of the links are in there. But if you close your eyes and squint, what stands out the most? Obviously, free pass stands out the most. The other thing that also stands out the most are two other ads from Sid, another ad from Sid. That's the other thing, if you really want to, um, uh, to get people to notice you, you can buy, you can buy and dominate the page. Um, uh, okay. And that, well, notice we did two things in this. First of all, ah, come on, there we go. First of all, this small text right here says no promotion code needed. So somebody looks at that, free pass, no promotion code needed. Now, using Eventbrite, you can't really get rid of, of some of those things, but they already know not to, to ignore the promotion code. Pay off, and that's, that's what we're talking about here. Um, one more quick one, you can run through this um, uh, on, on the website. This is how you get clicks for content, and remember, you are content, okay? Rob McMillan's the, the founder of Silicon Valley Bank's um, uh, wine uh, program, and he's, he's immensely familiar with his customer. So he knew what they were interested in, he shaped a, uh, when we, he shaped a, um, uh, a powerful headline. He paid off on the headline. So here we go. Restaurant sales collapsing for small wineries. Okay, that's an OMG kind of a headline for, for his. Um, uh, then, oops, let me go back here. Um, um, so it's compelling. He's, he pays off, if you read the entire article, he pays off completely. 
Um, and his first day clicks um, show that, well, I'm doing this obviously because I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, Wine Industry Insight was on the first day, number one, Facebook native, somebody else here. The second, uh, and the referring sites. The second day was pretty much the same sort of thing, except I came in, Wine Industry Insight came in second to Facebook. And I figure if you got to come in second to somebody. But what that says also is that there was a social media sharing of that. He was so compelling that he got the social media shares out of the article. And those social media shares out of the article were what drove the um, uh, what drove Facebook, okay? Um, and there's a, there's another uh, ad there. I, we're going to run quickly. Going to get get through here. Um, I self-destruct in four minutes. Um, eyes attract attention. Faces attract attention. This is a really boring staff page. Look where things start. They always hit the face. It doesn't have to be a human face, just because the eyes have it. Eyes will attract people. There's a great ad. Um, uh, and this is perfectly put together, OK? Um, unless you like your gums rotting out, um, healthy gums are cool. There's a face, there's a smile, there's eyes. Save 20%. OK, boom, they've hit that. Um, just real, real quickly. If, if, you, if you put stuff in all capital letters, people are not going to read it, OK? 71% of people did not read text in all capital letters. Second one, bulleted lists. If you don't have lists that are bulleted, then people are not going to view it. In this particular case, 70% of the people viewed bulleted lists. Um, lots of people didn't. OK, that's through here. OK, we're, we're getting into just some good ads. To make some points here, be creative with space. This was the inspiration for the ad I created for, for Sid, because it doesn't really look like what you usually see, and it's a little bit off center. It's just a little, little bit off center. It uses the same space, but it's a little bit off center. OK, this one's interesting because you've got a face, but you've also got some big red uh, down here in, in the ad. Um, um, money's good for attracting, and then you've got an ad next to it. I'm not sure which one of those is going to attract um, uh, the most attention. Color, OK? Color matters. The color that you use can affect the behavior change that you want to make. Red tends to be an active color. Red tends to agitate, motivate. Cooler colors tend to make people comfortable. If you want to, to, if you're branding and you're not looking for click throughs, you want the cooler colors because those will make people feel comfortable. Um, uh, boom. I mean, that, uh, the, the, the ad, um, uh, the purple just, just stands out. Uh, there's another, you know, two of them um, Sid's ad and then Barrel Builders um, are very visible on that page. The emotions of colors, this is, this is up, but you can see everything from friendly, balance, excitement. The color you're using does have a, 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 an effect. OK, once again, we, we, we go back to that, and we've seen that. Boom. OK, contact information. Um, uh, the, uh, the PowerPoint will download as a PDF. If you're using iOS, we have a bug right now because iOS wants to try to open it. Um, and it's coming down in, um, in an in a interesting format, technical issue. OK, um, uh, and that link, once again, will be at the top of lewispurdue.com or wineindustryinsight.com. There we go, 65 slides in 28 seconds left. OK. Anyway.